This is Farm Journal's Margie Fisher. Joining me is Brad Butke, one of our presenters here at the Farm Journal Corn College. Brad, at the 2011 event, you're talking about variable rate technology. As farmers look for ways to refine the management in their fields while increasing yields, variable rate's one solution, but it inquires an investment. Could you tell me a little bit about the payback that comes with variable rate? The first thing to probably to recognize is that uh, there's a lot of other links in your, your management chain that will have more effect on your bottom line than, than going to variable rates. So uh, things like pest management, uh, uniform stands, uh, getting your tillage right, having a comprehensive fertility plan, those are all things that need to be in place before you move to variable rate. Uh, variable rate's a high management practice, um, so once you get to that point, uh, the paybacks can be pretty significant. Uh, in our clientele, uh, population-wise, we've been pushing uh, some pretty high populations and ear counts. Uh, on some of our lighter soil types, we're able to back off and save some seed costs there while maintaining yield. Uh, the other thing is that we've seen a positive interaction uh, with nitrogen and population as far as uh, we've seen where we push population, we need to follow it with nitrogen. So not only in those areas where we're able to back off on population, we can also back off on nitrogen. So there can be some significant savings there as well. Uh, to think that you're going to use more or less nitrogen uh, in a, a variable rate uh, scenario uh, may or may not be correct. What we're trying to do is maybe move where that nitrogen goes on the field. Uh, so we're kind of moving where our, our uh, seeds going, where our nitrogen's going, um, and overall maybe using pretty close to the same amount that we were in the past. Would you say that uh, a typical entry into doing any variable rate would be variable rate population at planting, or would you necessarily start a client off with variable rate nitrogen? Um, it depends on the, the client. A lot of times, uh, variable rate population is the easiest way to go. Um, because a lot of guys are purchasing new planters and most of the new planters have hydraulic drives on them. So there's uh, very little e equipment investment uh, for somebody that's already purchasing a new planter. So a lot of guys uh, tend to lead towards the population side. If I was going to pick one over the other, uh, I would probably pick the nitrogen side. If you understand um, is and and pre side dress nitrate tests uh, and have a handle on the nitrogen cycle, there's more money to be saved and made uh, varying your nitrogen rate right now than population. When it comes to the ag retailer or dealer support for, you know, a lot of guys rent bars, is there a large amount of toolbars out there that are outfitted for variable rate nitrogen? There's a lot of toolbars out there that are set up with the technology and the electronics to get it done. Uh, and that's kind of what we covered a little bit today in our presentation, is how do we adapt the plumbing systems on those uh, to be more adequate and friendly towards variable rates. So a lot of the producers that we work with are able to um, work through it with their, uh, their retailers and get those changes made at a relatively low cost. Thank you, Brad.